Hi, this is Captain Sam Downing, Pork Chop Express Charters. Uh, starting a video blog this year. I'm going to try to do updates at least bi-weekly. I'm going to shoot for weekly. Uh, may not get that done every week. Uh, but we're going to bring you um, some tips and tricks on tackle. Uh, we're also going to uh, do reports on the walleye fishing that we've been doing out on the lake. Um, let you know how we're catching the fish. Um, what we're doing, uh, what's working for us, and uh, really just give you some uh, uh, tackle techniques and tips to help you help you catch walleye out on the lake. So first session this week, we're gonna go with offshore tackle companies, planer boards. Uh, we're gonna talk about different ways that they're set up, uh, that you can use them for different types of line, different times of year, uh, different configurations, um, they all work. They're not the all end all. They're not the only way they work. They're just ways that I have used them. I know people use them. Um, definitely not the only way. Uh, obviously you can configure these any way you want. There are other uh, release clips out in the world uh, that I've seen people put on these, but we're talking about products that are offered by Offshore Tackle Company. So uh, first board we're gonna talk about is the OR12. Uh, the OR12, if you just buy the standard board, it's going to come configured just like this. You're going to have a fixed flag, does not, does not come with the uh, title flag set up. It's going to come with a red snapper clip, uh, OR16, um, and then it's going to come with the OR19 release clip, um, the orange clip, and uh, they are fixed to the board. So these are your basic setups that an OR12 is going to come with. Plenty of people fish with them just like this. You don't have to have the other accessories to fish. The other accessories just help uh, help you be more successful in different scenarios, which we'll explain. So the way these boards uh, get hooked up, if you're releasing, um, we take the line and we do a loop process, five loops, three, four, five. And then we put that twisted line right in that release clip. That does a couple of things for you. Um, that, if I can get my finger out of there, that really, that twist actually lets that line roll out of that clip. And if you just put it straight through without the twist, it will actually, it rips out of the clip and it will tear up the line a little faster. So that rolling process gives that clip a little more to bite on and it lets, it lets the line roll out of the clip instead of rip out of the clip. And then these rear clips have a center pin that keep your line from pulling out of the clip. So when you install it, you have to make sure the line is below that center clip. So the line can't pull out and you'll lose your board. Uh, the way these uh, boards will all be in a line as you're trolling uh, based on your adjusted length. And when a fish is on, it'll start to drift backwards based on the weight of the fish. Heavy fish will pull it back pretty far and a smaller fish will barely pull it out of line. Um, when it comes out and you know there's a fish, you're going to grab your pole up on this end and you're going to give it a jerk. And it's going to pull out of that front clip and swing backwards and it will drift away from the line of boards and then you can reel that board in. So that is your standard OR12 configuration and that's how it's going to come. There are two holes on the back of these boards to put um, your uh, OR16 snapper clip. I've seen people use them in both locations. Uh, they will affect your board differently. I prefer it in the lower location because it is not pulling the back of the board down as far as it will if it's up here. So if it's up here, it's gonna pull harder on the board. The water is hitting this board here on this planer section right here. And that's what's allowing that board to plane in the water out away from the boat. So. I think hooking it on the bottom allows the board to sit a little more upright in the water, allowing it to plane a little bit better like it's designed to do. So that's my opinion. I like it on the bottom hole if you're gonna run it in the basic configuration. Um, the next setup we'll show you is adding the tattle flag kit to the board. So the tattle flag kit's going to include uh, uh, the heavy duty wire, the white washer right here um, that spaces the flag out so it can actually move. It's going to include the spring um, and I believe it comes with another uh, threaded eye bolt as well. 
but you can just move the one from the front to the back. I do recommend removing the eye bolt from the front or the line can get tangled in it. Uh, I would not leave them there if you're gonna add the flag kit. Remove that and then install right in the back, right above uh, the screw on the black plate. Um, so what this does is when a fish bites, the fish will pull on the lure and drag the board backwards. So it will actually put that flag down and drag at the same time. So these are tension adjustable for different times of the year. So I set all of my springs. There are four holes right here on the front of the board. Um, I put my spring in the bottom hole and then I do my adjustments on the flag. There are four holes on the flag. Um, so the highest hole would be tight, uh, a tighter tension. So it takes more pressure to pull that flag down. That will be for later when we're going faster speeds and the baits are pulling harder, or if you're using uh, jet divers or something that pulls pretty hard. This time of the year, we're probably on the lowest setting. Um, we're going very slow speeds. Um, we're not using any uh, diving, uh, diving apparatuses to dive our baits deeper. We're fishing pretty shallow water. So in the spring, I'm starting with uh, less tension on the spring. And as we speed up, I'm gonna move that higher so if you're trolling and the flag is leaning without a fish being on it, you simply have to raise this spring up to a, to a higher hole so it won't go back just from your trolling speed. Um, the difference in hooking up once you add a tidal flag kit is you still do your five loops if you're using a release. And you uh, put that into your front clip just like we did before. And then the difference is between this clip and this clip, we have to leave a little slack because for the flag to operate, this has to move. So it cannot be tight right there like that. So you have to pull that line in just a little bit and then put it down below the pin so that there's some slack in that line. If there's no slack in that line, this flag will not operate. It will be bound up. Uh, it works the same way, fish is on, board is drifting back out of line, you jerk your pole, it will flip back, go to the back of the boat, and you can reel it in without resistance. So that's your OR-12 with a tidal flag kit. Uh, same release clips. Um, the way I run boards in the spring um, would be this setup here. I use the tidal flag on all my boards. Um, I use the OR18 snapper clip, which is uh, this clip right here. I put that on my front and I lock that down in the spring. We're typically catching bigger fish. Uh, the bigger fish pull the board back out of line. You don't have to worry about it interfering or getting tangled with the other boards as much as when we get later in the year and start catching smaller size fish. So the fish are all, for the most part, pretty good size this time of the year and in the late fall as well. So I clamp down and uh, I do not release the boards. So with these, um, I don't do the five loop. I go through the jaw and I go around the bottom jaw and lock it down. And you still need the slack because I'm using a flag. So a little slack and uh, put a, you have to have a snapper clip up on the back just as protection. Um, that'll prevent that board if for some reason this slips out. I've never had that happen. But if it did, uh, this would catch it and you still wouldn't lose your board. Um, so this is gonna pull back when a fish is on and you're gonna reel it in behind that row of boards. So if it's a big fish, it's gonna pull it back plenty. You're not gonna have any problem reeling it in. If it's a smaller fish, it may not pull it back very far. So couple tricks to help you do that. Number one, point your rod to the opposite side of the boat. So if the board's on the right looking out the back of the boat and uh, that board's not quite back far enough, you don't wanna reel in all your other boards. That just doesn't make sense. So point your rod towards the left side of the boat and keep it pointed over there and reel from that corner of the boat. That way it'll help you to clear. If it still isn't missing those boards, we will actually open our bale drift this board back, create some space, and then start to reel. Uh, that way we can reel this board in without tangling the other boards between the boat and where that board is positioned. So those are the tricks for using this style. Now when the water heats up and we 
pull spawns over, spawn, spawn and pull spawn. We start catching, you know, smaller size fish. Happens every year. Um, we switch. This is what you're primarily going to see if you went on a charter on my boat. I do a release on the front. I do the OR18 snapper on the rear, uh, simply because I've never, ever lost a board with snapper. Um, and it just doesn't wear out like the pads in a red. We fish a lot, so we're putting these in and out of the water uh, many, many times in a day, two trips a day a lot of times, and they're getting a lot of wear uh, on, on my particular boat. So the snapper works better for me for longevity. And I just don't lose, uh, I just don't lose a board. And the only way you're gonna lose it is if the line actually broke. Uh, it does happen occasionally, not very often, but uh, that's the only way you're gonna lose this board with a snapper on there. So this configuration, it, all the same, we do the five, we do the five loops. Four or five, I mean, it's not a science. Just get some loops to clamp onto. Then I leave some slack because I'm running a flag and I wrap my bottom jaw. Just like that, clamp it down. And when a fish is on there, it's gonna pull the flag down, it's gonna drip back, I can release it. It'll clear, it'll float back while you're reeling. And when it comes up to the boat, we just snap the clip and the line pops right off. So this is what you're typically gonna see on my boat and this is how I run them. Um, if you're a braid guy, uh, you like to run braid or you, we get into the spoon season. A lot of people switch to braid when they're running jet divers and spoons. Um, so for board fishing, you have another option here. On the front clip, you can run a SAMS Pro Release. The SAMS Pro Release has a rubber, uh, rubber grommet right around here that grips that braid really well. Um, and it clamps down like so. And when you jerk the line, it'll pull and the line will pop right off. And then you need to use a, uh, a snapper, an OR18 snapper clip on the rear for braid. Uh, the red OR16, um, it does not hold up with braid. It will clamp it, it will hold it, but it gets torn up pretty quick. Braid's very abrasive. Um, you'll wear out those pads really quickly and they'll become a slot in there and they'll slide on the line. And then the line will get tight between the two clips and your flags won't work. Um, so I recommend the snapper. If you do not want to release your boards, you do a snapper on the front, OR18, and an OR18 on the back. And that will, that will be the setup just like this one, um, where it does not release. So if you want it to release, you need a SAMS Pro on the front. If you want to keep it solid, you use the OR18 on the front. So the way the SAMS Pro connects to the line is it will wrap around this rubber bushing three or four times. And then you just lock it down into that clip. And then if you're using a flag, leave some slack, wrap that bottom jaw in your snapper, snap it down. That way your flag will still move. And then the release, you just pull on it. It releases right off. This will swing around, it'll float back and you're right back to clearing your boards uh, with braid line. Um, this works great with uh, jet divers if you're running braid. Um, you could probably use this release with mono, I never have, um, but I don't see why you couldn't, um, other than your mono stretches, and if this is too tight, it might have trouble releasing with mono filament. Uh, braid's gonna release it really well. Um, tensions on a couple of these releases, so on your SAMS Pro, there is a screw on the jaw right there, and that screw will adjust your tension. If you tighten the screw clockwise, it'll make this tighter and it won't pop out as easily. So if you're setting your board and it's popping out without a fish, you're gonna wanna tighten that down so it holds a little tighter. If it's too tight and you can't even jerk your line to release it, you'll loosen that screw and that'll, that'll loosen it up a little bit. So it takes a little bit of adjustment, but. Once you get them adjusted, they stay pretty well. On the snapper clip, it has a tension adjustment screw as well, right here. So if you're pushing this down and it just won't go down, it's too tight, you loosen that screw and that will make this fold a little bit better. If it's line slipping in here and it's not tight enough, you tighten that screw and that makes your tension tighter on the OR18 clip. So those are the different ways that I've seen these boards ran, uh, the different options that 
offshore tackle offers. Um, gives you some choices. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. I'll put all my contact information and website uh, on, uh, on the credits at the end of the video. I will, uh, I will uh, also, we offer training trips. If you ever want a trip where you want to get hands-on training, you want to see and use these boards uh, while we're out fishing, uh, you can book that type of a trip with me and we'll actually put them in your hands. We'll show you how to use them. We'll show you how to make the loops and how to hook them up. Uh, we'll teach you the technique that you can then use on your own boat. So hope you're all having a great season so far. Look forward to seeing you on the lake. Uh, tight lines to everyone.